wish you might probably want to take it. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from today. Uh, my name is Angela Juhas, and I'll be your friendly webinar moderator today. Today we're covering the Hansen approach to COR, and I'll introduce our presenters in just one moment after attending to a few housekeeping items first. Um, today we have uh, two presenters, so we have Steve Williams and John Aspinall joining us from Hanson. A little bit of background on our presenters today. Uh, the first presenter to speak is Steve Williams, who developed the Hanson COR training package and delivered the initial rollout of the Hanson and High Mix sites throughout the country regions of New South Wales. He also developed an audit tool designed to measure how well a company is meeting their COR obligations. Steve has over 38 years experience in transport and training, including 30 years with the Hanson Group. After Steve, we have John Aspinall, who will be the second presenter. John continues to develop and deliver the training package throughout New South Wales for the Hanson Group, including for fresher training as required, particularly if the NHVR introduces changes and updates. John also conducts audits with Hanson's contractors with the aim of improving their level of compliance and overall fleet safety. John has over 40 years experience in transport and training, including 28 years with the Hanson Group. Together, Steve and John will give an overview of how Hanson developed and delivered a simple COR training program that delivered benefits to the company and to the employees. John will also give an overview of how he helps contractors meet their COR obligations and a warm welcome to both Steve and John today. Ladies and gentlemen, today's presentation will be approximately 30 minutes in length. Uh, as usual, we are recording this session, so please don't worry about taking notes. We will uh, send out the recording and the presentation material to you once the webinar has concluded. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your feedback and questions along the way. Uh, webinars are more enjoyable if they're interactive, so please don't be shy and send through your questions and we'll monitor those at our end and I will ask those of the presenter as we move through the presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our presenters today. Welcome, Steve and John. Thank you so much for your time. How are you both going today? We're well, thanks, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Very well. Fantastic. All right. I'm handing over control to both of you now, and uh, momentarily we'll be able to commence the presentation. I do thank you both for your time. I, I understand it is indeed very, very precious. So uh, the fact that you could devote some time to present for us today uh, is very exciting. And indeed, I'm sure um, I speak on behalf of the whole audience when I say we're, we're really looking forward to hearing about the Hanson approach to COR. Thanks, Angela. Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Uh, under the COR regulations, what responsibility does a company, its employees, managers, directors, contractors, suppliers and customers have? How and when do these responsibilities have to be met? How do you ensure that you or your employees are not the weak link? So what is the Hanson approach to COR? I'll briefly detail how we developed and rolled out a simple, effective COR training program across our New South Wales operations covering employees and contractor drivers. John will then detail how he's helping our subcontractors and customers to understand and comply with the COR regulations. John will also speak on the ongoing nature of the COR training. Hanson will share its COR training package with the transport industry and it's available on the NRSPP website. But firstly, I'll give you a brief overview of our company and operations and a glimpse of the demands placed upon our transport division. Who is Hanson? Hanson is part of the Heidelberg Cement Group and operates some 2,500 sites over five continents, employing some 53,000 people. As a global company, we have international, Australian and regional policies, standards and regulations to consider and comply. A training has to cover all these, yet still offer solutions to local issues. Our answer was to develop 
a standard training package delivered individually to our sites. This resulted in a consistent message but also offered flexibility to help our people solve their local and sometimes unique issues. Hanson in Australia includes the Hanson and Timex brands operating in all states with over 225 concrete plants and 55 quarries and directly employ 3,000 people. Our sites range from virtually one-man operations through to some of the largest concrete plants in Australia in areas from major cities to remote locations including mine sites. We deliver to sites ranging from suburban backyards to some of the largest and most complex building projects in Australia. We also undertake deliveries underground. We've even barged trucks across bays and harbours to reach waterfront properties. Some of our operations have restricted operating hours and curfews on vehicle movements. Some have restrictions on the number of vehicle movements per hour to and from site. Similarly, some building and delivery sites have restrictions on delivery times and limited space to queue trucks. Conversely, some delivery sites only accept deliveries at night or weekends. Occasionally, we have to coordinate deliveries around tight heights. Our, our fleet varies in size from cars and light commercial vehicles through rigid trucks, semi-trailers, trucks and dogs, and in some states to B doubles and road trains. We operate over 800 light vehicles. The heavy fleet in numbers some 1,500 trucks delivering more than 1.4 million loads and travelling more than 63 million kilometres per year. The majority of our trips are short in nature as concrete is a perishable product with limited working life. Our concrete trucks only average about 9 or 10 k's to the job site but usually complete around 4 to 5 loads per day. If the site's closer, some trucks may complete up to 10 loads per day. In special cases, we may travel up to two hours to supply a customer to supply concrete to one of our customers. This also presents several, several technical and logistical challenges. Our concrete plants often load higher trucks. The tippers typically travel 100 kilometres from the quarry to the tip point, usually completing four to five loads per shift. We've also imported specialty aggregates from interstate as well as loading our fleet, our quarries load ex-bin customers. So over 12 months, the ex-bin customers will take several hundred thousand loads out of our quarries. We also use subcontractors to meet peak demand. All this adds complexity to our COR obligations. We cannot control the actions of our ex-bin customers, nor can we fully control actions of the foreign concrete trucks and drivers. However, we must empower our people the knowledge and tools to act responsibly and to be able to prove that they and Hanson as a company have taken reasonable steps to prevent these drivers from breaching the regulations. But now you have a, an inkling of the complexity of our transport task. But what is COR and why was it brought in? In the past it was mainly the driver shouldering the responsibility or the blame when regulations were breached, be it speeding, truck mass, load restraint or driving hours. And yes, sometimes the driver was his own worst enemy. There were also times when enormous pressure was exerted on some drivers to deliver what was not legally achievable. The driver may have been given unreasonable deadlines, leading the driver to exceed work hours, or go rest breaks, or work more than six days straight. Often speeding became almost mandatory if the driver was to meet deadlines. Trucks were overloaded and load restraint almost non-existent as the driver cut corners to save time. The principle of COR is to ensure that everyone in the supply chain shares some responsibility to ensure road transport laws are not breached. Under the COR laws, if you exercise or have the capability of exercising control or influence over any transport task, you are deemed part of the supply chain and have a level of responsibility. The law recognises that multiple parties may be responsible for offences committed by drivers of heavy vehicles and can investigate along the supply chain and up and down the corporate chain of command. The onus is on everyone in the supply chain to show they have taken reasonable steps to prevent a driver breaching the regulations. 
You can have sight signs like this one above to highlight to drivers that they must comply with the regulations. You could even make it a condition of entry to your site. That alone is not nearly enough. You must still show that you and your employees took reasonable steps to not cause any breach of the regulations. Under COR, complying with transport regulations is a shared responsibility and all parties in the supply chain are responsible for preventing breaches. This approach recognises the effects of the actions and inactions and demands of other parties in the transport chain. Anyone, not just the driver, who has control over the transport task can be held responsible for breaches of road laws and may be legally liable. COR is similar to the legal concept of duty of care that underpins the OHS laws, now also known as workplace health and safety laws. This approach has long been used by the courts to impose liability, negligence and damages claims. Under compliance and enforcement provisions, everyone in the supply chain has a general duty to ensure the breaches of road transport laws do not occur. All parties need to make sure that their actions or inactions do not contribute to or encourage breaches of transport laws. If a party's actions, inactions or demands cause or contribute to the road safety breaches, they can be held legally accountable. It does not have to be proven that you knew your actions or inactions caused or contributed to a driver breaching the regulation. It is considered that anyone involved in road transport ought to know the effect of their actions or inactions. Ignorance is not a defence. The ostrich defence will not save you. Putting your hands up and saying, it's all too hard, well, I didn't know that, won't do you any favours in a court of law. To put it quite simply, influence equals responsibility, which equals legal liability. So we looked at a number of training options. We consider producing a DVD or an online program to be accessed by each site. Each had its advantages but failed to be able to address the local issues or individual challenges of our sites. We needed to develop a transferable training program that delivered a consistent message to every operation and every employee but also considered and addressed any unique or local issues. The two PowerPoint presentations developed cover key points of COR. The key to successful delivery was visiting every New South Wales operation. The training delivered a regional program. The local issues were discussed with people at the coalface. The employees were engaged before, during and after the training session. The two presentations are very similar. They just have a slightly different focus. One presentation covers what drivers can and cannot do and the second presentation focuses more on what site staff can and cannot expect of a driver. The slides are used as prompts to ensure that the key areas are covered. Just standing in front of a group and reciting a course outline won't achieve the results. The presenter needs to be experienced, knowledgeable, credible and be able to relate to people in the field, look at their issues understand those issues and offer workable solutions. The site manager was also taken through his responsibilities and obligations under COR with a focus on actions and inactions. What he can and cannot do and what he must do if he hears or sees someone breaching or causing a, a breach. We also left each manager a list of resources including copies of the NTC series of fact sheets to use as toolbox topics. These are available on the NRSPP website or the NTC website direct. So how did we meet those obligations? In a prosecution, the courts would consider the actions of each party in the supply chain. This includes what measures those parties have in place to prevent breaches of road transport rules occurring. Each person in the chain must be able to relate show that they took all reasonable steps to ensure a driver can perform their duties without breaching the mass, dimension, loading, speed compliance and work hour laws. Sometimes inaction or not taking the steps to prevent a breach is just as bad as an action that caused the breach of the regulations in the first place. If you hear of something that isn't right, you have to take the appropriate action. 
just because you're not at the coalface or not directly involved or do not directly interact with the driver does not absolve you of all responsibility. The old cliche, if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem, certainly applies. As the little diagram suggests, if you're not bailing, if you're not helping those bailing, you will sink with them. We're also heavily involved with our industry body, the Cement, Concrete and Aggregates Australia, or CCAA, in developing a DVD and information pamphlets for our industry and customers. The CCAA is very proactive in developing and promoting safety initiatives and programs. Every year they promote safety initiatives by presenting awards at both state and national level to worthy programs within our industry. The major companies within the pre-mixed concrete industry team together to develop a DVD and pamphlets presenting some common issues and challenges. Whilst these have a pre-mixed concrete industry focus, the concept and message is transferable transferable across industries. Please contact your own industry body. They may well have something similar or they may be able to develop this idea. A unified industry approach is usually much easier to sell to customers. These pamphlets are available on the CCA website which is www.concrete.net.au and of course the NRSBP website. The DVD was developed to help customers understand how sometimes their demands can expose themselves as well as their suppliers to charges under the COR. The DVD explores three scenarios that demonstrate situations often encountered in our industry that could lead to breaches in COR regulations. But again, the concept and principle is transferable across industries. The DVD was produced by combined effort of the major companies in our industry. Uh, the CCA launched the DVD to customers and sales staff of member companies at a special screening and information sessions. Again, this DVD is available upon request via the CCA website with the website address on the screen. I'll now hand you over to John who will take you through the basics of a training presen presentation and the audit tool that we have developed. Thank you, Steve. Good morning or afternoon to everybody. The training was and continues to be developed and delivered face to face in the field with employees and contractors. Prior to the presentation, I researched that site's workload, delivery area and any unusual demands to understand any special local issues. Often a walk or a drive around our site will help me to understand some local issues or challenges. I start the session by handing out printouts from for the presentation, and I find that some people like to jot down some notes as we go through the slides. I open the training session by talking about my past uh, with the company and within the transport industry. I talk about what used to happen in the industry and how this cannot happen any longer. I continue the face-to-face -face training with employees, engaging them with discussions about the local issues and discussing regional solutions. At the end of the presentation, we usually have a question and answer session uh, and general discussion. I'm also happy to answer questions during presentation. I find that by addressing issues as our, as our people raise them, it keeps them involved in the session. The message is delivered consistently, but also tailored to each operation to, our people comply with, to help our people comply with the regulations and cope with their own sometimes unique workplace needs. I use the slides more as a prompt to, to prompts to ensure that during the session I cover all topics and points. I find that by keeping the session flexible and less formal or rigidly structured encourages more feedback and involvement. It is important to involve and engage with our staff. The training tool is quite versatile and can be used to train a large number of staff in one place without the need for projectors and expensive slideshows. We have delivered the training in dedicated training rooms, lunch rooms, site sheds, batch rooms and Weybridge offices, all without, with absolute minimal setup time and almost nil capital outlay. The simplicity of the training tool and presentation helps the drivers and plant staff relate to the presenter. It is seen as a more personal way of delivering the message. 
and the training tool itself simply consists of an A3 display folder and a stand. It is a low cost and easy and is easy to update. It is very transportable and transferable to any training location and can be used in any environment. There is also nil setup time and no technical difficulties that may need assistance from an IT guru. You can't crash halfway through or compatibility problems with site hardware such as projectors. There is no need for special lighting or screens. The presentation is kept very informal. The simplicity of the flip chart presentation allows for easy updates. The concept can be used to deliver any message. The training tool and presentation is explained to the site manager and left on site. This enables the site manager to train any new staff in their chain of responsibility obligations and we back this up by revisiting sites as part of a refresher training including updates to regulations. We also include a DVD and toolbox meeting topics as part of our package to operations. The refresher training for uh, chain of responsibility however is not a once off training exercise. I continue to visit each site in New South Wales to ensure that our people are kept up to date with changes. This refresher or retraining can take place in a number of forms. I will review fatigue management including work and rest breaks at each plant or site with all drivers present, both company and LODs or contracted drivers, as well as ensuring the drivers and staff understand the work and rest hours rules, I check that they are recording the times accurately and when necessary I will demonstrate how some reports can generated through our own system can be used as a supplementary record. We can either support or disprove their own log sheet entries. We discuss how ETAG data can be support or disprove the log sheet records. I also review chain of responsibility with any new drivers to check that they fully understand the initial training package and this is often a one-on-one -on -one system session. Some of our country plans often call for review and update of chain of responsibility for their drivers as the NHVR issues new directives. I then take the opportunity to visit other sites in the area or visit contractors based in that area. Our new employees now undertake a great deal of online training. We have established online training kiosks in many of our operations. This supplements rather than replaces the face-to-face -face training and refresher training that are keystones of our approach. Now helping our contractors, uh, the road industry as players ranging from single vehicle operations through to multinationals with hundreds of vehicles. Many of the smaller operators are mum and dad companies. We find that some contractors know they have to do more to fulfil their responsibilities and want to fulfil those responsibilities but are not sure just where to start. The smaller operators don't have the resources or the knowledge to develop their own training package, policies or procedures, yet they are the backbone of the transport industry and they're an important resource for the industry, industry and deserve assistance. In the past there has been some help, some online help available such as fact sheets available on the NCC website. There are a number of other websites but whilst some are user friendly, others are not uh, only accessible to members or want of upfront payment. For the smaller operators this can be problematic. Most are so busy running their operations that they don't always have time available to undertake hours or even days searching vast numbers of websites. Many have limited training experience. They don't have the resources available to dedicate time to developing their own programs. The philosophy of the NRSPP initiative and the resulting website is, so freely, is to freely help all operators in the transport industry to become safer, improve the safety of general public and reduce our road toll. This mirrors Hanson's approach to helping our contractors. Chain of responsibility audit, uh, we have Hanson has developed an audit tool and is auditing external carriers who carry our material. The focus is on helping the contractor to improve. It is a simple spreadsheet based tool that can be used to score how well a company or operator is meeting its chain of responsibility the responsibilities. The audit tool has several inbuilt macros to autofill some sections and produce reports. My method of conducting an audit starts by contacting the operator or company to discuss the proposed audit. I then set out a pre-audit checklist for the company. If they do not have all the required documents, I let them know that we can help. I then organise a suitable time to carry out the audit. 
Once we've completed the audit, areas that need improving are discussed. Uh, we then provide simple sample policies or advise where to investigate to achieve the required level of compliance. If improvements are needed, a time frame is agreed upon and a reaudit is scheduled. This is not to say that every operator has been found to need help. It is generally speaking the smaller operators that need more guidance. One of the packages we supply is Hanson's Chain of Responsibility Training Kit as used for training our employees. Once an audit has been carried out, most companies, from the mum and dad operations up to multi-vehicle operators, have accepted the offer of the Hanson Chain Chain of Responsibility Package and some adopt it virtually as is, some use it as a starting point to develop their own solutions. Some use selected parts to infill gaps in their existing system. The aim is to pinpoint where improvement is needed and then help by providing simple tools. We are prepared to remove any contractor from our database if they refuse to improve or, re or refuse an audit. To date, this has not been necessary as we found that contractors want to comply and want to improve but often just don't know where or how to start. To date, every contractor has been very proactive in striving for improvement. The audit tool is a sample or mock-up of the audit tool itself. There are a range of sections with a number of audit points within each section. Some questions are hidden or automatically removed from the tool when the front section is completed. The audit tool has inbuilt flexibility to reflect the size and complexity of the operation being checked. Each question carries a weighted score. The more critical topics or questions are more heavily weighted. The available response to each order is simply limited to not compliant, improvement needed or compliant. Not compliant is used if no evidence is available and or the operator has zero policy procedure or system in place. Improvement needed means the operator has something in place, has started a process or is making an effort to comply. Compliant is self-explanatory. The tool is completed to automatically infill. Cannot company cannot produce evidence when not compliant. Is when not compliant is selected. The tool is formatted to highlight the comment cell when improvement required is selected to improve the auditor to comment. An operator could also use this tool to self-audit. This could be used to show what reasonable steps have been taken to comply with the chain of responsibility regulations. Hi Angela, I believe you've got some questions for us. I do. Thanks guys. Um, I've got a question here from Luke and Luke's asking, uh, have Hanson commenced any COR training in WA or I guess um, any, anywhere else in the country? Different regions are, are, are at different levels of rolling out training. Um, John and I are heavily involved in Eastern Region, which takes in virtually all of New South Wales. Um, and we're not 100% up to date on, on how the others are progressing. Um, WA tends, the whole of WA tends to have slightly different regulations than the rest of Australia, uh, even under the national regulations. So uh, in short, I can't really answer that question. Uh, I'm sure, uh, um, would you be opposed to Luke uh, contacting you after the webinar to discuss further maybe and maybe we can get him some further clarification on that? Yes, that'd be fine. No worries at all. Well, thanks for your question Luke and we'll certainly get the, the uh, contact details of the presenters out at the conclusion of the webinar. Uh, I've got another question here from Clay. Clay's asking, how long did the initial training rollout take, including development of training and conducting the training? It was probably over a period of about three months when we developed, worked out what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it, and then travelled right around New South Wales. Uh, and I tended to do it in week blocks. So I, I'd cover one area for a week. Um, and then as a result of that week I'd have a pile of training records that had to be entered into our database, uh, plus some other work to do each, each week in the office. Uh, so every second week I'd be back out on the road again. And one of the critical things was not to lock yourself into X hours at each site, uh, because if you had to wait for someone to come back or if someone had a lot of questions, it was more important to spend the time there with the people and get them involved and make them feel that the, 
training was really addressed to them, not just at them. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, another question here from Scott. Uh, Scott's asking, is there some way for you to measure the success of the COR training? And I think that's a great question, Scott. Yeah, well, the, the way is that we, we have had no breaches whatsoever and we can follow up with uh, continual training just on a, a review on a three monthly visit to a site. No worries at all. Well, thank you for answering those questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll remind you again, please do, do not hesitate to send your questions or your comments through. Obviously, uh, we want to make this webinar as relevant to you as possible, so ask questions and, and really use this opportunity. Uh, I'll let the presenters get back with, uh, to their presentation and uh, we'll take some more questions later on in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the mock-up audit result. Each section is scored and comments added as necessary. These comments are in addition to the comments added to each audit topic. The higher level comment is a summary of that operator's overall performance or level of compliance for that section. The audit result is a health check or a score risk assessment. The audit has multiple benefits. It helps any transport operator pinpoint areas that need improvement and highlights that most critical areas for improvement. The company conducting the audit is able to show that it is taking reasonable steps to ensure that its contractors are complying with container responsibility regulations and obligations. It will help the operator improve his overall fleet safety, his driver's safety and the safety of the general public. The audit tool will automatically infill and produce a summary of non-conformance notes so that corrective action can be recorded. Once again, the purpose of the audit is to pinpoint where improvement is required in critical areas. This report allows for the improvement to be recorded and used to prove how a company is meeting its channel of responsibility obligations. The audit tool produces a similar report for improvement notes to highlight areas where the company has made a start on channel of responsibility compliance but needs some improvement. Background resources and systems, any chain of responsibility training has to be backed up with robust systems and checks. One of the most basic simple system check is ensuring that the driver's daily log sheets are checked to ensure that they are being completed correctly, hours worked and rest breaks recorded and the daily checks are completed. Even our concrete drivers complete a daily log sheet to record work and rest times very similar to the National Work Diary. Several drivers have reported that it's the first thing that police ask for if they've been involved in a motor vehicle accident, even when they are clearly not at fault. We have developed several other systems. Our control of mass is very tight and robust. We have a database within our SAP system which details, with details of company and contracted trucks including tear weight, tear date and allowable GVM and GCM. The system prevents a docket from being printed if a tipper is over mass whilst on the way bridge. The SAP system checks each concrete truck's allowable GVM and tear against the mix design. The system will then adjust the load size accordingly to prior to the batch command being sent to the concrete batching computer. Even if you don't have such a computer program, back up your words with actions. If you put a rule in place, be prepared to back it up with consistent actions. All concrete trucks are regularly reteared to ensure compliance with allowable mass. Tippers are reteared during random selected days. A quarry will declare a tear weight check day and every truck entering the quarry is reteared. No notice is given. If a supplier brings a load that is over mass, we do not refuse the load as we believe that only that only compounds the safety risk. The supplier is then contacted and given two choices. We accept the load, but then reload the truck with the over mass amount. And that is, if the truck was three tons over the mass, we put the three ton back on that truck and return it to the supplier. A written warning is sent to the supplier. Secondly, we accept the load, but where it cannot be reloaded with over mass, we will only pay for the legal load. The supplier loses any commercial advantage and a written warning is sent to the supplier. Repeat offenders can be removed from our supplier list. To date, we have not had repeat offenders, but again, be 
be prepared to back your words with actions if required. The safety message is our approach to chain of responsibility shouldn't be a standalone document, policy statement or manual. It should be supported by and support your primary safety policies and statements. Our core approach underlines the ties in with two of our principal safety messages. There is no task that is so important that we can't take the time to find a safe way to do it. And mates helping mates. A good chain of responsibility system will, in, in essence, improve the safety of your employees, cust contractors, customers and the general public. A well-structured chain of responsibility system will enhance the tie and tie in with your existing safety programs. There is no task that is so important that we can, can't take the time to find a safe way to do it. This is virtually the basis of all of our safety programs, policies and procedures. In regards to the chain of responsibility obligations, drivers are not under pressure to speed. Drivers are given an expected time of arrival at sites, but it is stressed that this is an ETA, only an ETA. It is never a deadline, and some of our operations have imposed local speed limits. Our drivers are given a speed limit lower than the posted speed limit through sensitive areas or known black spots. Drivers are not under pressure to work without adequate rest. Drivers are able to re require, request a rest break whenever the need arises, and some rest breaks are scheduled within the system, but these are flexible and can be overridden by the driver if he needs to stop earlier. Our trucks are not overloaded. As per the earlier slide, our truck mass is controlled very tightly. Trucks are maintained, drivers complete daily checks prior to shift start as well as end of shift checks. Any safety issues are addressed. As an example, if a driver reports that the tipper tarp is damaged or inoperative, the truck is not to be loaded until the tarp system has been repaired. Service is very tightly controlled. All company trucks are accredited under NHVAS. Audits are conducted internally as well as externally as per the requirements. Mates helping mates. Our employees look out for each other, both informally as workmates and formally through our Take One and Safety Observation initiatives. Similarly, companies should help one another to develop a, safety in a safer industry. Transport companies can help one another either on a one-on-one -on -one basis or by becoming proactively involved with their industry body. Many industry bodies like our CCAA are proactive in developing safety guides and systems to improve industry safety. Industry bodies are a product of their member companies. The more companies and operators that become active members and the more effort each member puts in, the greater the end result. The end result is that employees, customers, contracts, contractors, industry and general public, including all of our own families, are safer. I'll hand back to Steve and fill his off. The underlying principles behind the NRSP are that safety should not be considered as a competitive advantage, but rather and a shared advantage. It should assist Australian businesses and organisations to not only improve the safety of the employees, but also help reduce the nation's road toll through unity and collaboration, and to promote the principle that good road safety practices are good for business and to enable sharing of knowledge and learning to help businesses. Hanson is happy to share their COR package with anyone in road transport. We do not view this knowledge as a competitive advantage. We view it as a tool to improve fleet safety, which in turn improves the road safety of every road user. If you require any of the Hanson documentation, the training package or the audit tool, please check the website, which is www.nrspp.com.au. And uh, I'll just, Angela, do you have any more questions there for us at the moment? I do have a couple of questions, actually, to your, to your mentioned point just now. Uh, JP uh, was asking, uh, can you share the two presentations used for training uh, drivers and sites? And so I guess that's a yes. <laughs> Yes, I Definitely. believe it's already up on the website. Fantastic. All right. Well, JP, we'll certainly send uh, those website details out to you. They are up on the screen, but as I said, you don't have to take notes. We'll get all that information out to the audience shortly. We have another question here from Mandy. 
Matt is asking, how did Hanson roll out the DVD to customers and how well was it received? The DVD was rolled out by the CCAA as an industry initiative and major customers and uh, industry sales staff were invited to presentations that were organised by the CCAA and it was the DVD was played through and then we had a question and answer session afterwards. We also had representatives from then the RTA, which is our transport body, uh, plus uh, some key speakers from within the industry. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your question, Mandy. And actually, another follow-up question from Mandy, so I'll shoot that one through as well. Uh, she's asking, how long does an average training session run? I would say it probably averages around an hour. Yeah. Um, it depends on the size of the group you've got there and the how many local issues they want to talk about. You also find in some cases there will be some drivers who are very quiet while they're part of the group. But as soon as the others disperse, they'll want to sit down and have a 10 or 15 or 20 minute talk with the presenter going over some of the issues they, they would like to talk about in particular. Uh, but you know, I have also, you know, John, John and I both had at times spent up to a whole day on one site because the number of drivers that are going through that site, the number of supervisors, uh, and we're trying to fit in around custard demands. Oh wow, a whole day, but but so good of you to, as you said, want to fit in with the customer demands. So so good on you, um, Mandy. I hope we've answered your questions, okay? Uh, another question here from Emma. Emma's asking, what is the cost of the audit to be conducted? The cost is just purely time. Yeah, we don't charge the customer, we don't charge anybody any money. It's our time uh, and our presentation. Oh, wow, that's, that's fantastic. Now, that, the audit tool is on the website too, I believe, by now. Uh, if it's not there already, it'll be there by the end of the day, I'm sure. Um, and a company can self-audit themselves and get a, get a feel for how they're travelling as well. Yeah, so, so Emma's just made a follow-up comment. So anyone can access the audit tool? Yes, that's correct. Fantastic. All right, Emma, thanks very much for your question. A question here from uh, Lloyd. Lloyd says... Um, you said you have had no breaches. Over what time frame is that and what might be an example of a breach if you had one? Yeah, it's been over, the period's been two years um, and a breach could be anything from a customer telling a contract, one of our concrete truck drivers to hurry back to a concrete plant and the driver is booked by the police for speeding then that customer is in breach of the regulation for enticing the driver to speed. No, another breach could be over mass, but uh, again, no tipper can come out of any of our quarries if it's over the GVM of the vehicle or the GCM of the vehicle. But that's very tightly controlled. Um, we, we have had times when the RMS is set up outside one of our plants or quarries and we'll weigh every truck coming in and out. And again, we've had no breaches there. Well, that's certainly very good to know. Okay, a question here from Sarah. Um, Sarah says, I was wondering if you had to do much work to update your audit tool post the 2013 heavy vehicle national law being introduced? No, because um, we were fairly, we were monitoring that fairly closely. Um, and we feel we've addressed the key issues that we have to within the audit. No worries. Okay, I've had a comment here from Andrew saying that he's having some trouble accessing uh, that website on the screen there. I'll double check that and um, just make sure it's all right at the end of the webinar. A question here from Ivan. Ivan is asking, uh, any insight into how you overcame the challenges of logistics in making staff available in completing the three-month target, uh, i.e. sessions outside the normal work hours, um, conscripting extra contractors, etc.? 
Uh, well, that's where at times you spend up to a day on a job site because we are working in around custom demand. We haven't taken vehicles off the road to go through the training session. Um, so sometimes we'll get there just, uh, half an hour before the normal shift start and get through most of the presentation before any loads start going out the gate. Other times we'll, we'll do it after they're finished work. Or other times you'll do it uh, at a handful of drivers at a time while they're coming in and out of the plants. So it's, it's a, it, we could block a plant off, but it's usually um, not, necessary. not necessary and it, it impacts too much on customer service. So we, we figure that the customer service is more important than our time and we just take the time to make sure we cover every employee at that site. That's fantastic. Um, look, we've just had a couple of people um, write through that the um, the web address there um, is not .com.au, it's .org.au, but we'll, we'll fix that up and send it on through, so that's not an issue. Um, John and Steve, I really appreciate your time today. It's been a really insightful presentation, and, and just before you, you finish up, um, I have a question. Um, if there's one message you would like today's audience to take away from this webinar, what would that be? Drive safely. <laughs> Fair enough. A very, very simple message, but um, an effective one, no doubt. My message would be to um, look at your system with open eyes and just you know, go through everything and make sure that you're covering all your compliance points and that you are giving your employees the knowledge and tools to be able to comply with COR as well as general safety. And I would hope if anyone could get one thing out of this session that has been worth their time today. I'm sure it's very much been worth the, the 30 short minutes that we've been here today. Um, I certainly learned a lot, so, so thank you so much for your time. Um, we might uh, finish up the presentation and um, pop your contact details back on the screen there for anyone that wants to scribble it down quickly. Yep, that's fine. Okay, well, just to finish up, um, I'd like to thank all my fellow committee members or the founding partners of the National Road Safety Partnership Program for their time and efforts and expertise. Uh, Every company and every representative involved have actively engaged in the partnership for the sole purpose of helping others to improve fleet safety and the safety of the general public. And that's the logos of the founding members. So you can see there's a fair few companies involved and organisations, but um, large and small. And just thank everyone for listening in today. And there's our contact details on the screen. Well, thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you both so much for your time and, and look, I've already received a few comments here from our audience that they're, they're very grateful to you for the presentation of this session today. So, so thank you so much for devoting your, your morning to sharing the um, Hanson COR experience with us and, and teaching us a little bit more about it. And to all of you out there listening, interested in learning more, we'll certainly get those details out to you once the webinar has concluded. Thank you presenters for your time and I hope that the audience will be willing to join us again uh, for the next NRSPP uh, webinar of the series um, which will be taking place next month. Thank you all and have a fantastic day. Goodbye. Thanks Angela.